Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Daily Gab. Oh, it's a little brisky out here. But hey, it's not raining. I don't know about you guys, but I am sick to death of this daggum rain. I mean, a lot of folks are saying the, the weather <clears throat> is the way it is because they're saying, oh, it's climate change. Oh, it's, you know, you know, it's, it's the end is nigh. It is normal to have random folks screaming the end is nigh because for the past, I guess thousands and thousands and thousands of years, you've had people say the end is nigh. In the 60s, the end was nigh. In the 70s, the end was nigh. The 80s, so on and so forth. The end is nigh, the end is nigh, the end is nigh. And then remember that guy that said um, the world is going to end on this day at this time? Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> um... Every single religious text that I've come across has always said that we will never know the end. We will never know when the day is. We'll never know when it is. We never will know. N not even the best psychics are going to know. I swear it. And if they say that it's going to it's going to end by this time and this that and the other day, um <clears throat> They're pulling your leg. Um, it's just, no, just no. Um, I will tell you this, that the world is going to get worse before it gets even better. Let me turn that off. Doot, doot. There we go. Okay. So, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And, you know, a lot of people, mainly around the holidays, sorry. You got to love that morning light, right? So, it, it's just, it's the way things are, you know? Let me see if I can. Uh, nope. Actually, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. So, things are going to get worse before it gets better. And a lot of folks are like, well, it's already really bad. How much more worse can it get? Stop saying that. Because forces unknown are going to be like, oh, it's a challenge. So, hmm. Let me challenge this person. Um, hang on. Mm, boop. My sister gave me an earring bracelet necklace set that I really, 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 really love. Um, anywho, um, anywho. Just take everything a day at a, a day at a time. I've had people <clears throat> this morning. This one uh, person has been messaging me about, "Do you know when the end of the world is?" No. And even the best psychics will tell you nobody will know. Nobody will know. Quite frankly, I'm glad because. Ignorance is bliss when it comes to certain things, especially when it's something as um, cut and dry as when is the end? When is the world going to end? Okay, <clears throat> let me tell you something what I think. You can correct me if you want. You can have your own theories and opinions, but I think the earth will not end. I think that if you look at the history and what the archaeological finds are, we've had civilizations way before uh, times that th we are told. Um, we have 
so much that we can unearth to get answers. So much, so many. To the point where it's pretty much what? Police are even looking at me. What? I am not breaking any laws. Leave me alone. I'm not breaking any laws. I'm just sitting here talking to folks. <clears throat> Anywho. You will see that there are, um, there are multitudes of different time frames that, you know, and plus you've had kingdoms uh, change years and dates and, you know, because I, I can't quite remember the details, but I remember in, um, in my uh, history of world religion is, um, There was a, a king, there was a king that repeated the same year and the same calendar because that year was so great, he wanted, an, he wanted that year again and again and again and again until finally somebody that he listened to said, okay, you can't keep doing this, um... People are having birth, I, I guess, birthdays, and, and you just can't, you just can't stop time. You can't rewind. Um, I forgot which king it was. My memory's not all that terrific. But I do remember the important things, um, which is, <sighs> there's a lot of things in archaeological digs that do come up that, um, that we're told don't exist. And I'm going to be flat out with you. Um, unicorns are alive to this day. And no, they're not these beautiful, huge, magnificent creatures. They're actually... Okay. You, I'm pretty sure people have seen what deer look like, right? The ones with the antlers and all that good crap. Um, there's a midi... Like a Dark Ages uh, painting that describes... And book that describes that... Unicorns are, were as frequent as deer were in the European, in, in Europe, and um, other places. They were a, basically a giant goat, like a deer, uh, that just had one horn. I'm not kidding. Uh, they were big. They've been bred to be smaller. And you know, hey, Darwinism. Darwinism can change a lot of species. If you look at the, the 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 evolution of a certain animal, you'll see that there's this random, whoa, what the hell happened here? It's all of a sudden this, and now it's that? Okay. Whatever. <laughs> um, the big ones were basically hunted. And a lot of the small ones, I guess, adaptation took, you know, the ones that were allowed to flourish were the small ones. And a lot of people were like, I'm going to get a big unicorn. So, hunting those enough, the big unicorns, um, pretty much killed the genes on a, I guess, a big unicorn. But they were deer. They were deer. Okay? If you, if you look look it up, you'll see that, de that deer are now having that old gene where they were white once upon a time. Um, they're turning white again. They were brown, salt and pepper, gray, <clears throat> all kinds of colors of between uh, brown and gray. Now they're starting to become white again. Um, some of them are a little splotchy. Uh, it's an old recessive gene that's coming back up to the surface. So, genetics are like Russian roulette. You don't know what's going to be more dominant, what's going to be dominant or recessive. You don't, you don't know. Um, so, 
Now they are this tiny little thing that has this one horn coming out of their head. Um, <clears throat> they're goats. Once upon a time, they may have been beautiful, majestic, and huge, like a horse. Um, I mean, hey, a uh, T-Rex used to be, uh, uh, the T-Rex, what I'm told by an anthropologist is, um, did you know that a lot of the dinosaurs that we fear today are now birds? True thing. Uh, they're now birds. And I think, uh, They've told me that one of the, I think it was, it's either T-Rex or Velociraptor has been involved all the way into a chicken. Yeah. I don't know if it's true, but hey, it's fun to think I'm eating the world's, the world's most biggest and baddest predator of, of days of yore. You know, I'm just going to eat its leg now. You know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of things that we're told that aren't true, that are true. Like I think in New Zealand, they found a, um, they dug up a village that closely, 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 almost to a T described as a hobbit town. Grown adult skeletal remains that were the size of hobbits, and they were proportioned to be just like little people. Not like people that have dwarf, uh, dwarfism, um, where they have stunted arms and legs and um, spine, spinal area, yeah. Um, in fact, these are people that they can tell by the age of the skeletal remains what, like, how old they were when they died. Um, that these are people that were proportioned like just smaller versions of us, you know, normal, average, Homo sapien. But the thing is about them, um, they died out. Um, they don't know if it was the the, the reasons of uh, their passing is still unknown. But they found a big size hobbit town <clears throat> um, somewhere in New Zealand. And ironically, Lord of the Rings was filmed there. Funny how things are coming back, you know, into a circle. It like a circle. <laughs> so if, if you guys watch that movie, you would understand. It's like a circle. It's never ending. <clears throat> what goes around does actually come around. But, we have been also told that dragons don't exist. That too is a lie. <clears throat> um, they're finding remains of that. And they're also finding underneath um, UK um I heard underneath UK when they were digging, like, tunnels, uh, for, uh, Subway, that they found a chamber where there was hot, warm, sulfuric-smelling, um, air coming out of nowhere, and, and this was the area underground where the, there was no air to, to, there's, no, no, none. But, long story short, they found a chamber where there was stone, like, dragon statues. And looked like they were sleeping. Now, the lore is when they are sleeping and hibernating, they turn to stone. And that is when you cannot bother them or hurt them. They had someone come down there to investigated and lo and behold these statues had a pulse 
and the air was coming from them, the statues, in the, uh, yeah, so they sealed it back up. They sealed it back up. And this was known, I want to say, in year 2001. Year 2001. I tried finding the story back, uh, story again, and I just, I'm having trouble finding the actual story. I don't know where it went, I don't know what became of it, but hey, this little tidbit that I know. Um, <clears throat> so, and another story is, I think it's somewhere in Bali. There's a tree where they, uh, in their lore is, uh, where little people came from. They flew everywhere. Now, there, now, when it comes to fairies and pixies, there is a lot of stories about them. Europe, Asia, mm, France, Italy, um, America even. Um, what's the other place? Uh, India. India. And, um, they have found mummified remains of these little tiny pixie looking things with wings or the wings are a bit damaged, but hey, they found them. So we're going to assume they exist. So same thing as the skunk ape or Sasquatch or whatever you want to call that dude. Um... I really think that that's a, an evolution from, uh, what is it, Neanderthal. Because if you look, if you really give it a good hard look and a study through, you'll see that we are not kin to Neanderthal. We are not kin to apes. We are an offshoot from it, but then there's this, um, uh, split. There's a split between Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon. Cro-Magnon did pop up, but we don't know our origins. But we do know that we're not a part of the Neanderthal. Um, it's just, we're cousins of it, of the you know, I don't know the proper terms, but I know, I do know that we're not a part of it and that we are something else. Um, there's a split between, uh, this version of Homo sapien and this version of Homo sapien and somewhere there's an in-between and we don't know where that is. We don't know what happened. Um, I don't know. But, uh, Mr. Alien Dude thinks it's aliens. I, I'm on the fence on that. And, um, reason why I'm talking about so many things in this video is because I've had a lot of people ask me questions about, um, you studied this, uh, what's your take on this? And I'm like, okay, well, pull up a chair and let's, um, uh, let's talk, you know? Not to mention, I've got people asking me, um, where did Christmas come from and all that. So, I'm just over here like, I need to pull up my notes. Because I would get curious and I would, I would research and research and research. I would, um, test out the theories, see if everything clicks, see if the timeline's correct. You know, I'm, I really want, you know, the truth. I want answers. And since a lot of people don't have time to sit there and pour over documents and information and make phone calls and email people, you know, it, it's it's better for me to just summarize it and just be like, okay, this is what I found out. But long story short, there's a lot of things in this world that proves that the world did not end. It's society and civilization that has ended. The thing is, we're due for a collapse. Now, 
That's not the end of the world. That's the end of a civilization. The end of a chapter. Let's face it. This way of life that a lot of that's mainstream, it's not really helping and it's not really working out. Is it profitable? Yes. Is it productive? Yes. Is it healthy? No. And is it right? I kind of want to say not really. Now, if we change as a society to care about one another, like we're one big family, which technically we are. If you took everyone's lineage, everyone's background and ancestry, you're going to find that it all boils down to one line, one race, the human race. We are all related in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> all of us. <clears throat> and how you treat others also affects you. Oh, God, sorry about that. How you treat other people does affect you. We are emotional beings. We are energy-driven beings. And we also are, are indulgent, indulgent beings. We like to do what feels good. We like to do what's... You know, what feels good to us. Yes, there's users. Yes, there's people that just, like, get off on using folks. But, you know, honestly, there is a right way and a wrong way to utilize people. But not use them like a thing. <laughs> now, there are people that do like to be used. Who am I to question? And everyone, different strokes for different folks. I'm not bagging on anybody in their, you know, how they prefer to live. But there is a right way and a wrong way to treat people and to talk to people. If we, as a society, wake up and treat each other how we are supposed to be treated, you would find that things will change. Heck, I bet if we do that, you know, the homeless population would decrease dramatically. I saw a video last night on Facebook where there was, they did an experiment where they had a little boy sitting in the most busiest area of a city. I don't know what city really, but it looked like somewhere like Chicago or New York. I'm not sure where. And, um... He didn't have a coat, and he looked cold. It and, and for, like, I don't know how many hours that boy sat there, and one person at that busy town, uh, town center, one person helped him. One person gave them their jacket. People tried to ignore him. Because we either can't be bothered or we're too afraid to let our heart extend to somebody else because we're afraid that it'll put us out or something or we're afraid that there's an ulterior motive in there <laughs> or we're afraid of being accused of uh, bothering the kid we're afraid of doing what's right and that is a cry for help on society's part. Now, you have questions, ask away, or if you want, do your own homework, research, and find the truth. The truth will set you free. It may hurt a little bit, but it's worth a little pain. That's all I have time for today, folks. I wish, I wish, I wish everyone has a really good day today. It looks nice. It's sunny. It's cold as hell, but I'll take what I can get. Love you all. Namaste.